I'll be presenting on the conservation of genes in the insulin pathway within Drosophila flies. And first I wanna take a look at a little bit of background information on networking, uh, specifically gene networking. And a gene network is just defined by the interactions between genes and other genes within the pathway. So here we show a lot of circles and they're all interacting with each other. Um, you'll notice that the larger circles will have more lines connected to them. And those, inter uh, those represent the interactions with the other circles. And then the smaller circles will have fewer lines connecting them to other circles. And we'll revisit this image in a moment. So now we need to elaborate on what a signaling pathway is. So a signaling pathway is just the way that an extracellular signal communicates an intracellular signal in a cell. Uh, so there are two general hypotheses of which genes in a pathway are under greater evolutionary constraint. So model A shows that higher constraint um, occurs later in the pathway, whereas in model B, it'll show that the constraint is earlier in the pathway. So we know that data suggests that the model A is what the insulin pathway will follow. So here we're looking again at the um, image that we saw on one of the first slides. And in the context of a pathway, now we see that the smaller circles depict genes that are more upstream in the pathway and have less interactions with their surrounding genes. And then the larger circles are going to depict genes that are further downstream in the pathway with more interactions. And therefore they're hypothesized to be more constrained. And here for the insulin pathway in regards to the gene FOXO specifically, um, we are going to hypothesize that the fork head domain of FOXO is more conserved compared to the total protein due to the involvement of it with INR um, transcriptional reg regulation. So the image on the left will show the fork head domain bound to the INR region in the DNA. And then the image on the right will show the um, insulin tor pathway in D. melanogaster where FOXO is shown to be a stimulatory transcription factor for INR. And then um, why are we using Drosophila flies to investigate this? Well, we know that the insulin pathway is conserved from flies to humans. So once we gain understanding of gene regulation in the insulin pathway of Drosophila, we can use it to provide, provide the insight on human genomics and lead us to advancements for human conditions such as diabetes. So this figure depicts the conservation of insulin pathway across metazoans, um, where each gene is a different color and the boxes below the metazoan classification will represent which genes are present in that species. So as you can see, um, almost all of the genes are conserved from humans to zebrafish. And then a good portion of the genes will also be conserved from there to the flies as well. Um, but we're specifically looking at the INR shown in purple and then the FOXO gene in orange. So taking a closer look at where FOXO is in the scheme of things, we have um, INR at the top of the pathway and then um, the arrows indicate the genes that each one interacts with. And once we get down to FOXO, we see that it goes all the way back to the top of the pathway um, and interacts with INR like we mentioned before. And I just wanted to point out that it says DFOXO, but that just stands for Drosophila since we're looking at the insulin pathway within that species. And then revisiting our hypothesis, we're predicting that the fork head domain is more conserved than the total protein due to the interaction it has with INR. And just as a reminder, previous data does show that the insulin pathway follows that model A, which genes further down in the pathway 
such as FOXO, are going to be highly conserved as a whole. And then here is an image from PFAM, and it's just the bioinformatic tool that we use to examine the structure of proteins. We use this analysis tool in order to determine the specific um, region within FOXO that the forkhead domain is located in. Here we see that the Drosophila persimilis species has um, the domain located at approximately amino acids 84 to 150, or 85 to 125. And according to the search, um, that's where it's going to be in the FOXO protein. So we are using that in our research. So this is the um, nucleotide sequence of FOXO in which the forkhead domain is highlighted. And it's just spanning from 255 to 465. And it's a higher range because this is nucleotide, or yeah, the nucleotides, and there's three bases per, per nucleotide. So now we have the peptide sequence. And again, the forkhead domain is highlighted and it's 85 to 125 like we found in Persimilis because it's comparable to D-melanogaster in that way. Um, and we use both forms of the sequence in order to distinguish the synonymous versus non-synonymous changes that are occurring in the sequence throughout evolution across the Drosophila species. <coughs> so before we go any further, we have to talk about annotation a little bit. And this is where genes are visualized in, in a genome browser. For this project, we use the GEP browser. And we do this in order to help us identify where the introns, ex exons, CDS regions, stop and start sites are. And then using what pre we predict for the structure of the gene, we can then apply the biology that we know and predict the function of a gene based on what protein specific exons are coding for. And again, these are just merely um, predictions. So the annotation process is what we perform in order to kind of validate the conservation of the genes. And then here in this project, we use the species listed in the phylogenetic tree shown on the right and so first we annotated FOXO across Drosophila, and then we compared the forkhead box domain sequences of the target species shown in red boxes to that of our um, comparison speech species, D. melanogaster, shown in that blue box. And then we compared the forkhead box domain conservation to the conservation of the whole protein. And then here are, here's just a screenshot of, oops, a screenshot of um, FOXO from the genome browser that was previously mentioned. And there are a few annotation tracks that are labeled. As you can see, the purple one is the prediction for the protein coding genes, and then blue is the protein prediction track. And then red is mRNA that helps us determine where the gene is being expressed. Then at the bottom, we have the splice junctions track that helps us locate where the introns and exons are splicing. And then in order to compare the conservation of the forkhead domain and total protein sequences, the nucleotide sequence of the total FOXO protein in the target species was compared to that of D. melanogaster. And then the forkhead domain sequence in the target species was compared um, to D. melanogaster as well. So the uh, y-axis here represents the percent change from the sequence within the target species compared to D. melanogaster with the whole protein sequence in blue and the forkhead domain in red. And then on the x-axis, we have the target species of Drosophila with the most diverged species um, from D. melanogaster to the least diverged species left to right. And we see that this trend is going to be expected because the less diverged um, a species is from a comparison species, the more conserved the sequences will be. 
So the less percent change there should be toward the right side of the graph. And that is what we found. Um, and then we also have the same comparison method performed using peptide sequences. And in both graphs, we saw that there's more conservation in the forkhead domain, so less percent change from D-melanogaster than the entire protein, which is in blue. That's why we have a greater percent change. And then the synonymous or silent changes aren't going to be represented in the amino acid sequence. So that's why we see less change overall for the peptide in comparison. Um, and then here in conclusion, the forkhead domain is in fact more conserved compared to the total protein. So this supported our original hypothesis because the forkhead domain is more well conserved across species than the total protein. And that suggests that the entire protein is highly conserved due to the low position of FOXO in the insulin pathway overall. But the forkhead domain is even more constrained due to the regulatory interaction it has with INR. So these are my acknowledgments. Um, Dr. Lindsay Long, my professor, and then two students that I worked with, the TA Dorothy Walton and then Caroline Schwab, and then the GP, of course, University of Alabama and Dr. Laura Reed.